Yeah, just go, dude. All right, so today we're going to be building a new editing rig for our customer. Uh, he wanted to go with Intel just because that's way faster. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So when it came to motherboards, in all honesty, uh, we didn't need too, too much. We're just looking for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That's all he really needed there. So anytime you're building a PC, try to use an anti-static uh, you know, station. You definitely don't want to break any of your components before you've even started. That definitely would not be fun. Uh, so we went with the i9-13900K. Uh, it's the best processor out there right now, especially when it comes to video editing. What was the decision that you advised him on yesterday? Uh, so he was questioning whether to go Intel or AMD. Uh, and when it comes to video editing, I definitely always recommend Intel. Uh, they actually use the integrated graphics that's in the CPU. It's called QuickSync uh, for Adobe Premiere when it comes to uh, either exporting and coding or just scrubbing in your timeline uh, makes it a much more seamless uh, solution and experience for them. And you were saying that you like AMD for like gaming, etc. Yeah, so when it comes to gaming, uh, the 7800X 3D is the best processor on the market right now, uh, especially at the price. It only comes in at about $440. You really just can't beat that. And what was this guy's uh, budget? Uh, he was trying to come in around $2,500 or less. I think the total uh, build cost was about 2000 so we came in just under. It's going to last him for years to come. Uh, another quick note, whenever you're using uh, an Intel or actually the new AMD processors, make sure you keep this socket cover. If your motherboard ever has an issue, you need to RMA it. If you don't have this socket cover on there, they're going to deny your RMA and you're out of motherboard. Uh, so put that back in the box as soon as you're done with it. I always recommend that. We got any Billet Labs attachments? Oh, uh, no, dude. We <laughs> auction those. It's okay. We're not selling those. <laughs> All right. When it comes to RAM, uh, he's going to need the best, especially when it comes to performance. So we went with 64 gigs of 6,400 mega transfers uh, Corsair RAM. Uh, I prefer G-Skill. He liked Corsair. His decision. Why do you prefer it? Uh, so it comes down to the actual memory modules in here. So these use what's called Samsung ADI. It's not the fastest, not the most stable. Uh, when it comes to G-Skill, especially their Ripjaw series, they use a Micron eDI, which is the best DDR5 on the market right now. All right, so again, when you build a PC, you're gonna wanna use uh, slot A1 and A2, uh, just to make sure that you get the full bandwidth of your RAM. And we're just gonna line up the slots. That's actually backwards. And push it in. You'll hear it click on both sides whenever it's in. And if it doesn't go in, don't force it. You will break your expensive memory. There we go, just like that. All right. So the last step on the motherboard assembly here, we're gonna go ahead and throw in a two terabyte Western Digital Drive. Uh, it's a PCIe 4.0 drive, so it's plenty fast uh, for all of this encoding and scratch disk work, everything like that. Uh, so when it comes to SSDs, always put them in the top slot that is available. Uh, the bottom two here on the motherboard, they actually do run off of the chipset. So that's gonna be slower. You definitely don't want to slow yourself down uh, if you spend a lot of money on an expensive drive. So we're gonna pop this cover off here. All right, so they use the new tool list design to install the SSDs. I will show you in the B-roll, it's a super, super simple step. All right, and we're gonna put that screw back on and it's good to go. All right, so now we're moving on to the cooler installation. Uh, so we're gonna open this guy up and we're gonna need the back plate out of here uh, to secure that to the board just before we put the board in the case. Makes everything a lot easier. Uh, you could install the back plate with the board in the case. This one has pretty good access, uh, but I always prefer doing it this way, whatever works best for you. You're gonna take out that massive hardware packet and the instructions, which read, even though a lot of people don't. Are you gonna read them? Probably, maybe not. <laughs> I know what those are for. I don't know what those are for. That ain't it. That's AMD. All right, we're going to the instructions. Hang on, here, let's see. So we need the plastic spacers, which are those, and then we just need that. Okay, well, that's easier than I wow. thought. Yeah, I was right. 
when I doubted myself. So don't forget to peel off these uh, little pads here. Uh, these help stick the back plate to the back of the motherboard, just so it doesn't fall off when you're installing it. And you're just gonna line it up with these holes here and push it through. Jeez, there we go. And just make good contact with it on the back of the board so those glue uh, little patches can hold. And as you can see, it's not going anywhere now. Uh, keep your thermal paste out too. Don't forget about that. That'd be a bad sign. And I'm gonna put all this away just because we do not need it. I'll keep the leather strap out though. We'll, we'll see if we need that. So now I'm actually gonna pull the cooler out. It looks like it comes with about five different options for the plate there, but we'll let the customer decide when he picks it up, which one he wants. And for now we'll toss that. All right, let's get into the case now by removing these side panel screws, apparently all the way. Pop that off. And I always recommend putting these in the case box just so you don't crack them or anything, uh, but I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna put them over here. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me later, but we'll find out. And we're gonna open up the back real quick. And this one doesn't matter, you can do whatever with this one. So we're just gonna put it on his old PC instead. And we're gonna lay the case down on its side here. And the hardware for it's gonna fall out because I forgot to take that out. There it is. All right, so to install the motherboard, it's uh, way easier than you'd think, I hope. Uh, this little plate right here goes right back here. So you're just gonna line it up on the inside. Come down and in, just like that. So now we're gonna open up our motherboard or our cases hardware here. And everything is super neatly sorted. That kind of sucks. I think I need these. <laughs> yes, so super hard to show you, but there is case or uh, screws that are labeled for the motherboard. Let me grab my screwdriver and get this secured in here. All right, so it depends on the size of your motherboard, but usually ATX motherboards use, this one, I believe it's 12 screws. Good. Uh, one of those may be a standoff screw. Here we go. Okay. And just two more to go at the top here. And the hardest one to get always is this one right here. Alrighty, and you can give it a little wiggle. As you can see, it's not going anywhere. So motherboard's fully installed. Uh, so now we're gonna throw on thermal paste. When it comes to, this is a point of contention, when it comes to LGA 1700, what I like to do because it is such a long die, I like to do a line all the way across it. Uh, some people put dots on either side. I'm not going to, it's really up to you. Uh, hopefully you don't get flamed in the comments, but you can never put too much. You can only put too little. Always remember that. <laughs> so we're just gonna unwrap the CPU cooler here real quick. And the nice thing about this Lee and Lee rig is that the fans come pre-attached, so it's kind of, you don't really have to do anything, Pew! especially for our setup here. So <clears throat> always peel this off. If you don't peel this off, your rig is gonna thermal throttle, probably crash. Make sure you take that plastic piece off. If you boot up your PC for the first time and you have a lot of issues, you didn't peel that off. Yeah. So we're gonna orient <laughs> this like this and make sure we get it on that guy. And something's wrong, hold up. Dun, dun, dun. What is going on here? I forgot to put these on. So again, make sure you put on and uh, read the instructions on the standoffs here, which I don't do ever. And it looks like they go that way, okay. So there's two sides to these. That side, you want up. If you see that side, it's not the correct way. You want those. Uh, that's just so the actual securing thread can reach all the way to the bottom or else you'll get really bad temperatures again. And if you put these plastic nubs on, you're either gonna break something 
or have uh, bad temperatures. Okay, attempt number two. We're just gonna hang that guy right there like that. Then you're gonna take these, which are your actual securing uh, pieces here, and you're just gonna run them in the center, which you're gonna need a lot of force on these, on your screwdriver to get them to actually thread. Just like that. And always do this in a cross pattern. Not only does it help you line it up, uh, it actually helps the thermal paste spread correctly. If you do it incorrectly, you could get bad thermal paste spread, could push it all to one side if you do it uneven. Again, you'll get bad temperatures that way. Delivery. And it looks like the postman's here. <laughs> bad X. <laughs> Dang, already? And now that they're all started, again, we're just gonna keep going in that X pattern here just to make sure we spread the thermal paste correctly. So there, there, there. Uh, when it comes to LGA 1700, one quick note on cooling, we recommend getting either the Thermal Grizzly or the Thermal Right uh, LGA securing bracket. We'll show you, we have one of those we're gonna use on our personal editing rig, which we'll be building soon. Uh, they help a lot. So these CPUs, because they're so large, over time, the IHS actually bends upwards and out uh, with a lot of heat cycles. So if you don't have that bracket, you can, over time, notice your temperatures will get really, really bad. Uh, and you could have some crashing issues because the pins aren't hitting all the CPU socks, sockets and all that. Uh, it could get pretty bad. Uh, so that cooler's all installed. Uh, there's only one thing left to do on here. We're just going to peel off this dust cover here. It is magnetic, so we're just going to stick it there so we don't lose it. We're going to put this in the case here. And actually, I have to take this off. I forgot about that. One second. Here. So on this top side, I can't really show you. I'll do my best to rotate it for you here. There's a securing screw right here that we have to take off. This little guy right here. It holds in the radiator mounting bracket. So once you take that off, uh, you'll see there's some feet up here as well. You just slide forward. And if you can get it out, it should just come right out. Just like that. So that's gonna be what we mount the radiator to. It's gonna go just like that. And now we're gonna start mounting the radiator to the case. Let me double check that side real quick. Yeah, just like that. Okay. All right. So it doesn't really matter in what order you tighten these necessarily, as long as it's on there good. Uh, you could put as little as four screws holding it. I like to put all of them, uh, but it's up to you. And I actually put it in the wrong side. So there's two slots here on this side, as I throw a screw in the PC. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> these, the outer ones are for 140s, the inner ones are for one, uh, 120s. So since this is a 240 mil radiator, we're gonna be using these inner channels here. Let me see if I can locate that screw I decided to toss in here. Oh, he has I one. think Sam has a sword. Let there. me see if I can find this screw. No, no. Oh, that's a case. Found that. <laughs> right, we're just going to shake the Johnny and see if it comes out. I hear it. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, oh. Oops. Where is it? Where'd it go? All right, we're just going to. Happy Leaf Erickson Day. There it is. is. Well, Anton, you forgot to mention this is a Barbie edition case. This is. This is the Ken the Barbenheimer case. Barbenheimer one? Yeah, Barbenheimer. <laughs> In theaters near you now. It's actually powered by a nuclear reactor. It is. <laughs> Just don't set it off. All right, so to finish the cooler installation, all you have to do is line it up with these holes here and here. If I can get it myself. There we go, there's one. There's a cable in the way. There we go. And slide it back. And then you're gonna use that same screw that was there just to secure the radiator bracket in. And it's all good to go. And you can slap your dust cover 
right back on. All right, so the last two steps we have here are for the graphics card and the power supply. So I always like to do power supply first, just get all your cables routed. So I'm gonna flip this thing up here. Move my thermal paste. And pull all this junk out back here. So there's a bunch of twist ties for the factory cable management. It's really just for shipping. Uh, hopefully you don't leave it like this. I don't know if your computer would work if you do that. So we're gonna undo all these twist ties. I try to avoid using twist ties when it comes to PC cable management. Uh, they are metal. So if the little plastic coating wears away and one of your power supply cables happens to be worn away as well, you could arc and short some stuff out or create a little fire. Uh, my preference in power supplies, by the way, uh, always Corsair. They're very quiet. I've had a couple EVGA power supplies uh, that piss me off because they've been the loudest components in my unit. Uh, again, 100% preference. Uh, this client decided to go with EVGA, uh, but if I could persuade them, I'd say go Corsair for sure. That brick of cables is going to be most of what we need there. And then this actual brick is the power supply. Uh, for the 4070Ti and the 13900K we went with, uh, I recommended at least an 850 watt power supply. You can get away with maybe a 750. Uh, we'd like to always recommend headroom in case the client decides he wants to upgrade uh, or overclock, anything like that. Uh, the stipulant to installing the power supply, uh, fan up in the case or fan down. It depends if the build's on carpet, uh, depends if you have pets, anything like that. I usually always recommend the fan down, uh, but for this guy, because I know he has a pet and I know it's going to go on the carpet, I'm going to go ahead and go fan up on this one. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to grab all the cables I need for this build here, install them, because it's a lot easier to do outside of the case, and then I will go ahead and screw the power supply in. So the reason you want it up in this case, if it's on carpet, it's only got this much room to breathe. Carpet's going to cut that in half, of course, especially if it's of a course, thicker, coarser of carpet. Course. Um, and that's going to make components a lot hotter. And then like the, the pet hair is just like another, another way to clog it, make things hotter. Uh, it has a lot more filtration if you're pulling from inside of the case, cause it has to go through uh -huh. all these fans, all this uh -huh. dust filter, everything like that. Uh, it's, it's a lot more filtration. That's why I recommend it. Got it. Case. Got it. Uh, if you guys are lucky, we can convince Skylar to build a new PC. So maybe you'll see Skylar, one of our employees, I'm that down. guy right there. I'm down. I, I think it's about time I can do the uh, yeah. PC gaming space. Yeah, maybe we'll make him build it. So you'll see him on camera. God, that won't go very well. <laughs> I think it will. Losing okay. screws. <laughs> For real, the Lizzie Gobbler himself. <laughs> so, the whoa, first whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. So. First thing we're going to do is pick out the right cables we're going to need. Uh, so you'll notice for the 24 pin, which is the first one we're going to need, there's a side that's labeled MB for motherboard. That side's going to actually plug into the motherboard. Uh, there's a split connection here that goes to the power supply. Same thing for CPU. So there's going to be two split ones. Uh, that's going to be the ones that actually go to the CPU. And then the single label for CPU is what goes into the power supply. So we're going to need two CPUs. Uh, two VGAs in a second, which I will show you as well, and the 24 pin. And this client actually has a SATA drive we're going to be pulling over from his previous build. So we're going to go ahead and plug one of those cables in as well. Uh, so here's the VGA cable. Uh, you can see one side is a six plus two pin. Uh, that actually goes to the graphics card and it's labeled VGA on the side. Uh, this one that's labeled VGA on the side and is just a straight eight pin. This is going to go to the power supply. Uh, oh. <laughs> this is going to be the SATA one. So that's going to be what a SATA power looks like. Okay, say that again. SATA, S-A-T-A. -A. That's a SATA power connection. So that's what powers your two and a half inch and three and a half inch drives, as well as your RGB controllers, anything like that. Uh, and then I'm going to come in close to the camera in just a second here. Good? Sure. Okay. So as you can see here, it does correspond with the cables on the power supply. So if I were to plug in a SATA, right there's SATA 4, and goes right in. And then to take it out, just pull up on the little tab, just like that, pull it straight out. 
So this is all we need. This is the benefit of a modular power supply <laughs> uh, because we're not going to have a bunch of extra cable clutter. We're only going to have the cables we need, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, and then, of course, it allows you to expand in the future if he gets another graphics card, if he gets more drives, anything like that. Uh, he has the ability to plug the cables in and keep going. I don't think that was the smartest way to film that, but that's Probably okay. Not, but no, 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 it's it's going to work fine. It's going to work fine. I just think later on, I'm going to look at that and be like, what the Ooh. fuck were you thinking? <laughs> All right, so with the extra cables, I usually just toss them back in the box, but I'm just going to toss them back here for now. Uh, this you're never going to need. I don't know why they include this. Uh, this is like a perif to Molex. Uh, companies are prehistoric. Uh, anyways, so we're going to install the power supply now. I'm going to rotate it so you guys can see. So install the power supply. On this case, you're just gonna move all that junk out of the way, come in sideways like that, and bend your cables a lot. That's why we installed them first. <laughs> there goes our if I can get secondary this camera. Way. Let's see. I don't know if I can do this as well. All right, let me rotate a little bit so I can see. I've been making Anthony work blind recently. Uh, yeah. You had to do it for the keyboard we too. Can do the next video, blind PC build. <laughs> Okay, so now that that's in, we're gonna take the included power supply screws. You could use the ones that come with the case or the power supply. I just grabbed the power supply ones because they were easily accessible. And we're just gonna screw it in, just like, not like that, not like that at all. Where it is the lineup points? We got this. It might have to go in upside down. So this one's gonna have to go in upside down. This case actually doesn't support it being mounted the other way. Uh, as you saw, the screw holes do not line up at all. So we will have to install this unit upside down. And then would you be able to just like give it feet in order to like mitigate the issues with the, with the carpet? Yeah, you could either put it on a box, anything. As long as you give it a little room to breathe, it should be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you can see now, the screw holes actually line up. So this case, for some reason, which I didn't know, is designed for the power supply to be only mounted in the upside down orientation. Which again, isn't that big of a deal, um, but just something for the client to consider. All right, so two more screws to go, just the top two here. strip it. Cross thread. They do call me little cross thread. It's your rap name? Yeah. Okay, that one that one's a little tough. It's all right. They call me fresh journeys. For real. Okay. So now that the power supply is installed, uh, we're gonna have to do some cable routing. So cable management management we will do last as I always do. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and feed all of these cables through the other side and put them where they need to go. So that guy's gonna go up there. This is the CPU eight pin, it's gonna go right here. Our SATA power is gonna stay back here. That's for the uh, cooler, for the hard drive, as well as the, I think that's it actually. Cooler, hard drive, oh, the case, the case as well. Okay, so now that those are ran through, I'm just going to plug them in to their corresponding location. So 24 pin is almost always located up here. Let me bend it the way I want it to go. Just like that. Sort of, maybe, hopefully. Come on now. There we go. So that popping sound is uh, normal, definitely. There we go, okay. And then we're gonna take the two eight pins up here and they're extremely hard for me to see. So we'll see if I can get this first try. You have to rotate it downward, sorry guys. Skylights, I need you. <laughs> okay, so it is usually a lot easier to plug these in without the cooler installed, but I like to make things hard for myself. So we're gonna do it afterwards. If we can get these to click together correctly. Okay, this power supply, they do not click together. That's beautiful.
Okay, I'm gonna struggle at this for a few minutes here. If you don't mind. Okay. Is it like uh, the rock from the SpongeBob snail races? It's okay, Rocky. You take your time. You go. There we go. We got one of them. So now that we got one, we're going to plug in the other one because this is a 13900K. We want to give it the cleanest power available, uh, which will come from two versus one eight pin. You could always use one, uh, but I always recommend two for high end processors. All right, almost got it in. Not really, it just popped out. See what I'm doing at all. Oh, that felt nice. Just got your nose in the shot. Yeah, I like it. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna make this easier for myself. Hang on. Okay. All right, so if you're not an idiot like me, you'll install these first. But uh, yeah, let's just undo the cooler real quick. Now, as you can see, there's a lot more space <laughs> to actually get in here and plug it in correctly. Which it still does not want to do. There we go. All right, so now that those are plugged in, I'm gonna reinstall the cooler one more time. Oops. Again, slap it on. Got to slap. All right, so now we're gonna do some miscellaneous cable plugins. So the front panel, USB 3.0, uh, front panel audio, some fan headers. Actually, there's a fan control controller on this. There'll be no fan plugins for us here. All right, so I'm gonna rotate this so you guys can check out what's going on here. And I'm actually gonna come on that side as well. All right, so I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, but it's gonna be real small. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're going to start with the front panel uh, HD audio, uh, reset switch, uh, USB 3.0. Uh, this will plug in later, that's SATA power for the fan hub here. Uh, this is USB 3.0. This is ARGB for the fans, that's going to go into the motherboard. And that is the uh, PWM for the fans as well. So we're going to take all these cables here and we're going to stuff them through and they're going to come up on this side. So I'm gonna start with the front panel ones, which are the real, real tiny ones. Find those. All right, power switch, which is gonna be right here. So we're gonna come through the bottom, right here. And then your front panel connectors are gonna be right here. Uh, they are labeled up here. You can refer to the motherboard as well, uh, but I've done this so many times, I already know it's just gonna be these two here. Let me just double check before I look like an idiot. <laughs> and... I think I'm right. We'll find out. It's actually those two. I was wrong. All right, anyways. Uh, <laughs> next, we're going to go on to front panel audio, which is going to be this little guy here. Goes right into where it says J, usually J audio, but this one just says audio. And there's a dead pin in this connector on the second top right one. Just make sure you line that up with the motherboard before you bend any pins. Just like that. And then we're going to move on to the type C connector, which on this motherboard is going to be right below the 24 pin, just like this. It is keyed, so it will go in one way. It'll click really nice, just like that, if it goes in the right way. If it doesn't click like that, you put the connector in the wrong way and it's probably going to fall right back out. Uh, the last one we're going to do here is the USB 3.0, which is going to be that little pin grid there. It is keyed again. So there is a little key right there that corresponds with the connector itself. And then you're just going to come straight down and in. Okay. 
like that. All right. And the last one here, last two, sorry. First one's gonna be a fan header. So we're gonna locate one that's kind of out of the way. I guess we're gonna go with this one here. That guy right there. That's for your fan controller for all the fans that came included in the case. And then there's an ARGB as well. So ARGB is going to be at the top here. So we're gonna come in like this. You can tell it's ARGB five volt uh, by the dead pin right there. It's also usually labeled, this one is not, uh, but it's gonna plug into RGB right there. Again, line up the dead pin just to make sure you don't crush anything. I'm a little low. Uh, these are very delicate connectors, especially the RGB ones, so make sure you line it up right. Here we go, just like that. Let me pull that cable back. And we'll be doing cable management in a little bit, uh, just because we're almost done wrapping everything up here. So the last things to do here is unwrap this mess of cables that are connected to the CPU cooler here. So we've got SATA power for the pump and two fan headers, actually a USB and a fan header. Uh, this one in particular is gonna plug into your CPU fan header. Uh, this is going to be PWM controlled by the motherboard. Uh, and if you don't give it the right signal, which is the CPU fan, uh, you can also give it a pump fan. Uh, but if you don't give it one of those two signals, you're gonna get really bad temperatures. Everything is gonna run uh, really, really bad. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna pull this cable through to manage it a little bit better. Just like that. Cool. And USB is right here. Uh, this one's gonna plug into the USB header right here. There is two of them down here. You can plug into either of them. Uh, again, there's a dead pin. So as you can see on that top row on the right-hand side, there's a dead pin. Make sure you line that up with the connector there. And this is gonna run behind the graphics card and a little be completely hidden. I know for now it looks a little uh, little questionable, but uh, we will hide that cable in just a second. For now I'm gonna tuck it like that. And this is SATA power. Uh, we're gonna run this one up to the top, right next to the other cable and through. And we'll plug that in in the back in a minute after we're done cable managing. And I believe there is one more, two more here. What is that cable? I'll get back to you on what that is, no clue. <laughs> I believe that's JRGB. Uh, we're gonna double check, but I think it needs to plug into the hub back there. So this is the fan header for your two fans included on the cooler. This is gonna go into a chassis uh, plug or else it will run at a really high RPM and be super annoying. Uh, for us, what we're going to do is we're going to tie it into the fan hub in the back, which I'll show you in a second, and just match the RPMs of the other fans included in the case. So now that we're back here, we're going to take this connector. We're going to run it along with these guys, and we'll cable manage it, like I said, in a minute. We'll run it right back here. And then we're just going to come in the side. Actually, it goes on that side. Never mind. We're going to unmanage it. It's going to go right into here, just like that. This is our SATA power for the pump. We're going to take our SATA plug that's trapped under the computer, untangle it. So this is for the fan hub. We're going to plug that in just like that. And this is for the cooler. We're going to plug it in like that and we're all powered back here. Uh, this last plug right here is gonna be for the client's hard drive we're gonna bring over in a minute. Uh, that's gonna go right in that drive sled, drive sled there. So this gave me the heebie-jeebies. Never back down, never what? Never give up, <laughs> never give up. He's like crying. I know. Never back down, never what? Frame, like it's I'm fine, dude. like this, again? <laughs> oh, I'm good, are you good? I'm. Dude, are you fucking good, bro? Are you good? All right, I'm good. So now we're going to plug in uh, two cables to the cooler here. There's one on top side, one on the bottom. Uh, you noticed, unfortunately, off camera, but I just rotated the pump so it doesn't say Lee and Lee sideways. So you're going to plug in this top cable up here. There's two separate ones, you'll notice. Uh, this is a fatter, larger one. Uh, that's a Y connector. 
you need that to actually get the RGB to work on these fans up here. Uh, so this cable is going to plug in down here. Hopefully I can get this first try. There we go. Not really, maybe. There we go. Okay, so these two cables, what you're going to do, you're going to take this female one, plug in the male, I don't know, whichever way they are, uh, from the fans included with the cooler, just like that. Uh, this we're not going to use, this would be uh, for the fans, but we're going to run them off the fan hub, so that one does not matter. And then this really long cable here, this is another ARGB header. Uh, you're going to plug that in to your motherboard so you have ARGB control as well. Uh, you can actually plug it in, I just remembered, to the fan hub. So we're going to do that so it's all synced together uh, with one program. So I'm going to bring it back here. I'm going to rotate it so you guys can see. And right up here it says ARGB5. We're just going to plug it in up there. Just like... Go just like that. Cool. All right. So now it's time for cable management, which is going to consist on this side of me just pulling all the slack through, making it look as good as I can from this angle. So you can cable manage any way you like. I usually just try to do the shortest runs that I can uh, on this side, on the visual side of the computer. Just helps clean everything up, make it look professional, if you will. And this long cable, I'm actually going to reroute out the top as well. So this one is going to go out the top up here. Just like that. I can't wait for people to comment how I struggle with this, but it's great. <laughs> I'll comment it. Oh, thank you, Skyler. Thank you. Really holding it down for the one time, huh? <laughs> All right, now I was just plugging that ARGB connector back in. Uh, this cable can kind of fuck off, so we're just gonna put it in up here. And again, this one will be hidden by the graphics card in just a minute, uh, but these cables we're gonna try to make look as clean as possible. Like that. All right, so the last step before we cable manage here is going to be the graphics card. So we're gonna go ahead and get that ready for installation. Uh, so when it came to graphics card, uh, the client was deciding between either a 3090 last gen, uh, which is you know the highest you can get besides a 3090 Ti, uh, or a 4070 Ti. Uh, I gave him the pros and cons, so definitely the pro of the 3090 is it's a little bit more powerful, it's about equal, uh, but it does have double the VRAM, so you're looking at 24 gigs of VRAM versus 12 on the 4070 Ti. Uh, it is less power efficient, so it's going to use a lot more power. Uh, you know, in California, electricity is expensive, so it's something to consider. Uh, and the 4070, like I told them, the benefits of that guy is it's going to be about equal in performance. Uh, it's going to be a little bit faster. You're going to have newer technologies like DLSS 3 uh, for frame generation if he plays any games. Uh, and it's going to be a smaller card. Uh, the benefit, again, of a new card, you have warranties. Uh, you, you're the only one to use it, so you kind of know what's going on. Uh, so he decided to go with the 4070 Ti over a used 3090, which I can't blame him for that. Uh, so to prepare the case for this guy here, we're going to unscrew these back uh, PCIe covers here, and as well as this bracket here. These are supposed to be finger tight from the factory. They never do it. You always need a screwdriver no matter how, how hard you try. And they are captive, but I like to take the whole bracket out. This makes it easier to get to these. And we're going to take, this is a two slot card, so we're going to take the second and third screw out. And keep these screws handy. Oh my god, that came out fast. Keep these screws handy. Uh, we do use them to secure the graphics card in. We'll rotate it just so I can see here. So this slot right here, this top slot, that's going to be where the graphics card goes. So always remember to clip your retention bar down. Take off your PCIe cover for the connector here. And come in just like this. So you do have to line up the feet on the back as well. And click it in, just like that. So we're going to use those two screws to screw in the graphics card. Uh, what I like to do just to make it sag less, just push up right here when you're screwing it in. Uh, it'll help the graphics card sag less, make, make it look a little bit better as well. I 
don't be shy on cranking these screws on. You're not going to damage anything. The bracket is tied into the graphics card and the cooler really hard. So it's not going to mess anything up. And again, I'm just going to hold it in while I screw these on. Just make sure they're super tight to avoid sag. There we go. And one more thing we need out of this, I forgot on the 40 series, is going to be the adapter for the power connectors. So this is going to use three uh, eight pins into the single, is it 12 or 16? I forget the 16 pin. Uh, again, this is a super high point of contention with this connector here. Uh, they're actually redesigning it because of the amount of cards that have burnt up. Uh, but the only cards that will burn and destroy this connector, if it's not plugged in all the way, are the 4090. Uh, the 4070, 4080 below, they don't pull enough wattage to melt this connector and light fires like uh, the 4090 does. Uh, very scary. <laughs> so the way you plug this connector in, there's sense pins up top. Just line it up with the connector, just like this. And it doesn't really click in. Uh, the newer ones do click in. So. If this connector isn't all the way in, and it usually happens when you're cable, manage it, cable managing it, just because you know you pull on it, you're trying to get the cables where you want to go, they'll actually wiggle out. As you can see, it's got a lot of play. This is with it fully secure. That clip is still down. So if it were to wiggle out like that, and you have any amount of that pin not touching in the graphics card, uh, that's where you see the pins start to melt, the connectors start to bubble, and you'll get smoke and possibly a fire. Uh, so you really want to make sure that that guy's seated all the way in there. All right, so because I forgot to plug in the VGA connector somehow, you do have to unscrew the power supply just to make it so you don't cut your hands trying to get in there. And preferably you don't have to do this step. <laughs> so I'm just gonna slide the power supply out the same way we put it in one more time here. Just like that. You don't have to take it all the way out, just enough to actually get your connector seated in there. And you can just push it right back in. It'll go, hopefully. Maybe. It's thinking about it. There we go. Jeez. <laughs> just a little bit of force needed to get this in. Alright, then we're going to screw it back in for the final time here. Theoretically speaking, yes, of course. last words. Yeah. Theoretically, extremely theoretical. We'll find out about five minutes here. There we go. All right, so now we're just gonna run those two cables to the adapter to the bottom here. If I can reach you, I believe so. Oh, that's gonna be a tight one, okay. That ain't happening. Okay, so we're gonna come through the side real quick right here. Uh, just because we are using that two and, or sorry, three and a half inch hard drive bay, we're not going to be able to get the cables routed through there correctly without, you know, damaging the connector or, you know, scraping them off entirely. So I'm going to pull them through here, just like this. And then we're going to connect all these together. So we are daisy chaining one of them, uh, meaning we're using a plug that has two connectors for one. I wouldn't recommend this for a 4080 or higher, but for a 4070 Ti, uh, it's going to work just fine. This card barely pulls any power anyways. It's another reason why I definitely prefer uh, Corsair cables. I feel like the cable quality on these, like the clip together points, just aren't up to up to par with other brands. So that's all good to go. Alrighty, so we're going to do some cable management. Uh, I do have to grab a bunch of zip ties. I forgot about that. Not 100% necessary to show you guys. We're just installing his old hard drive in the A new plus. system. A plus. Uh, and actually, uh, I'm gonna. David. Yes, sir. Shut the hell up. Absolutely, sir. <laughs> he's, he's our resident. Uh, <laughs> he likes to be loud. So while I have the hard drive tray out, I'm gonna not be lazy, and I'm gonna actually cable manage things correctly. Uh, just to make it a little nicer for our client here. Moments ago, he was ready to throw caution to the wind. I was absolutely ready to. In fact, I did. <laughs> but, you know, since I'm there, right? The resident Rainmaker found you a thousand zip ties. He did. He did. Okay, so I'm going to run these through here. 
no real point other than just making it look better. Uh, like I said, the only reason I'm able to do this is because I had to take the drive sled out to put the hard drive in for the client anyways. So all I'm in here, I figured I might as well. Okay, hopefully that looks better. I don't know. What I have to do is get the hard drive sled back in real quick. Okay, so we're just gonna throw in his hard drive sled one more time here. And I'm gonna slide it, oh geez, I'm gonna slide it all the way forward. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna throw it in quite literally. Uh, I think I put it in backwards. <laughs> Free homie tell us backwards. So it goes this way, because that's the way I took it out. Plus there's an arrow. You see the arrow. Okay. Wait, wait, let me get the arrow. There's the arrow. <laughs> that is in fact an arrow. God damn it, boy. Alright, and and line up with something. Give me something. Anything. Uh, Okay, so these are just thumb screws to screw it in. Nothing really fancy. Just hand tighten them if you can find all of them. Those are actually the back panel ones that I use, but we're not going to talk about that. We unscrew these because they're the back panel ones. All right, we can only get three just because that one foot is in the way, but uh, it's not gonna vibrate or go anywhere. It'll be okay, as you can see. All right, uh, now we're ready. For okay, so now we're gonna plug in the SATA data cable, SATA data cable, say that 20 times, uh, to the hard drive down here, which decided it wanted to slide. And I'm gonna rotate it for you guys one more time here. We're gonna run through right here and plug it in right below the graphics card and that SATA port. And that's it, just like that. Uh, one more thing for the hard drive, we're gonna take that last SATA plug, which we have down here, which is tangled and everything, that's fine. We'll get through that later. So the good thing about hard drive trays that I like, I like to uh, cram all the excess cables in there. It tends to just work for me. There we go. So now I've got power and data running to and from our hard drive. And for my easy cable management trip, <laughs> trip uh, trick of the day, just cram everything in there. If it closes, no one's gonna open it. No one's gonna look. Uh, you could go crazy with zip ties. And I think I might in a few minutes here, but uh, the majority of the power supply cables, the easiest way to manage, manage them is just uh, Cram them in there. Cram them in there, baby. <laughs> shove them. Stuff them and shove them. Techdep.com. Oh, yeah, baby. Just cram them in there. Yes, sir. Let me trademark that, <laughs> make a shirt out of it. So now is going to be where we start using zip ties in a second. We're going to zip tie all that up in a second. But main thing here before you start zip tying, make sure everything looks good up here. I don't see anything glaringly obvious for me besides this unfortunate cable, but not much I could do about that. Maybe run it like that. Make sure this is all the way in. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's about as good as it's going to get given this uh, hideous adapter right here. So now we're going to start zip tying everything to anything possible. So I usually like to start with all the fan cables here. Uh, even if you just, you know, zip tie them to this little bar here, which I'll rotate in a second. Even if you can just get them to this little bar here, anything helps. Just get them out of the way, make it so the side panel can close. Uh, if I do have a complaint about this case, other than the power supply only being able to be mounted one way, it doesn't have a whole lot of depth. You're looking at a couple millimeters uh, to manage your cables and make everything tight. So could be more space on the sides. There's just so much here and I don't have the right zip ties to do it, man. There's not a whole lot more I can do. <laughs> These are so small, I can't Stuff like- Stuff and shove this. it, baby. We're gonna have to. What, is that the phrase? Yeah. Nice. Shoving stuff. Shoving stuff, there we go. <laughs> Okay, we're about to be operation shoving stuff in a second. Nice, dude. There's like nothing I can do to make this look good. It pains me. 
What are what temperature are those zip ties rated to? A couple hundred usually. Really? Yeah, they're really oh. good ABS plastic. Wow. It doesn't get too hot back here. I know, but even so, I was just more so thinking about like I've seen people use them on like cars and stuff. Oh yeah, no. So the really the automotive grade are rated for like five hundred degrees. Wow. Like, they're super good. Nah, <laughs> grab Sam's sword. <laughs> Needed at this point, man. <laughs> it just broke the scissors. <laughs> 3D. Okay. All right. Now for Operation Cram and Slam. I like that one the most. Cram and Slam. We'll never know. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> All right. So there it is. It's done other than drivers and Windows install. You. Yeah, we'll give it a power on real quick. Give me one second. Does it have power? It does. There we go. Ew. Yes, sir. It's Sirski. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so that is our client's new editing PC. Uh, he came in actually originally because his drive got corrupted. So we're gonna do what we can to recover his data, clone it over, get anything we can on this new unit here so he doesn't lose any of his projects. Uh, but yeah, there it is. Give us a sales pitch, baby. That was it. No, but I mean like, okay. what else do we offer? Um, what else do we offer? I mean, can we, no, I just mean like, I know, I'm, I'm do we build for, uh, specifically with this, do we yeah, build? Okay, yeah, we do, we do. So if you're in the market for a new gaming PC, you know, you don't want to build it yourself. You don't want to buy a pre-built. Uh, we build PCs here. We do repairs. Uh, anything you're really looking for, give us a call. Stop on by. We'll get it done for you. And the website, techdep.com, baby. There it is. <laughs> uh, and that wraps up today's build. So if you're in the market for a new gaming PC, uh, if you want any parts, any repairs, we do mail-in repairs. We do in-store repairs. Uh, anything you're looking for, give us a call or visit our website at techdep.com. Yeah, stop on by. Hell yeah, yeah baby. It.